Hello and welcome to the third episode in Frog and Hands Pedagogy YouTube Masterclass Series. My name is Rohan Duper, my pronouns are he, him, and in this episode, Aaron, Jessica, and I will be guiding you through the steps of structuring a basic dance class. episodes in our pedagogy series, you'll learn about creating a safe and encouraging environment, giving strength-based feedback, and teaching students with varying degrees of experience. These are all incredibly useful tools and concepts to keep in your arsenal as we now move forward into structuring an actual class. A great place to start is by identifying your own goals and what the learning outcomes for your class are. Is it to introduce a certain number of dance styles? To promote healthy, active living through dance? to challenge students with technique and work toward technical proficiency, to encourage creative expression by guiding students through a process in which they create their own dance pieces. Challenge yourself as the teacher to come up with a series of learning outcomes and allow those to inform the content of your class, what skills you will be working on, what creative tasks you will be leading, and how you will implement progression-based learning. Pause the video here and take the time to write out three learning outcomes you'd like for your class. Identify one that focuses on technical skills, one that focuses on creative expression, and one that focuses on an overall life skill. We'll be using these throughout the rest of the episode to illustrate how you can begin to structure your class. Pause the video now and write out your three learning outcomes. There are two main types of dance classes that you can create. The first is a technique-based class, and the second is a creative process-based class. Each of these types of classes requires a unique approach and therefore needs to be structured differently. In a professional dance context, technical training is required as a foundation for all dancers to be able to explore a creative process freely and safely. In this case, technique-focused training often comes before any form of creation-focused training. An effective way of approaching this is to refer back to the goals and learning outcomes you've identified and work backwards to create a series of skills and progressions that not only promote your learning outcomes, but are also conducive to the ideas introduced in the earlier episodes. It's important your learning outcomes allow space for a safe and encouraging environment, tasks that are designed for or could be modified for all learning styles, and gives permission for students to make mistakes and to provide feedback for you as a teacher. Before we get into building the actual class content itself, here are some broad ideas and possibilities on how you can structure a class. Here is an example of a structure for a technique-focused class. Begin with a warm-up. Move on to some stationary technical exercises and tasks, followed by some traveling technical exercises and ending with learning some choreographic sequences and patterns. For a creative process-focused class, begin with a warm-up followed by some guided improvisational tasks, then move on to individual or group creative tasks to find inspiration and create movement vocabulary, then similar creation tasks to create choreographic sequences and possibly work up to some form of a presentation or performance. Your next task is to look at your learning outcomes and decide which of these structures is right for your class. For purposes of working together throughout this video, Let's use the technique-focused class structure. Work backwards from your learning outcomes and decide what needs to be accomplished each step of the way. List ideas for what you would like to accomplish in the learning choreographic sequences section and make sure they feed directly into the resulting learning outcomes. Then move a step back and list ideas for what you'd like to do in the traveling and stationary technical exercises. Make sure these link directly to what you've outlined for the choreographic sequence section then move one more step back to the warm-up and list ideas for introductory activities that get the body ready, specifically the parts of the body you plan on using for the following sections of class that you've already outlined. Pause the video here and complete this task. 
When you're ready to resume, we'll move on to building the actual content for each section of your class. Now that you have a broad idea of possible class structures, we can get into more of the details for creating your class. We will be working backwards with the structure in order to build your class with a logical progression. Working backward from your learning outcomes, let's start with the choreographic sequence. This does not need to be complex or require professional grade choreography from you. If you have a dance background, that's great, use it. If not, this may require some independent research, but there are so many resources out there for you to access and draw inspiration from. If you already have a basic understanding of dance vocabulary, create a sequence using steps that are already in your arsenal. Be sure to include steps that turn, travel, jump, and change levels. A sequence that is approximately four counts of eight is a great place to start. And be sure to find music that matches the mood and expression you want the students to tap into. If you're in the position of needing to do some research for this portion of class, do not worry. You can look on the internet for videos and tutorials of dance combinations of varying levels that you can use or draw inspiration from. These can be from social media dance challenges or videos of simple combinations from basic styles of dance, such as line dancing, square dancing, hustle, etc. If you are developing this section of your class this way, remember to ensure your choreographic sequence feeds directly into the learning outcomes you've identified and is applicable to students of varying experiences and learning styles. Your task is now to create or find a choreographic sequence while keeping these possible ideas in mind. While you do this, begin to create a playlist of music for your class and find a song for your choreographic sequence which supports the energy in the expression you wish to project. Pause the video now to complete this task. And when you come back, we'll move one more step backwards to complete the technical exercise portion of your class. Now, let's begin building the technical skills portion of your class. You should already have an idea of what you would like to accomplish from earlier when you worked backwards from the learning outcomes and the choreography section. Based on what you created for the choreography section of your class, what do you need to work on leading up to it? Is it drawing focus to body placement and alignment? Or working on basic steps that are going to be in the choreography later on? Perhaps there's a complex step in there that you can use this time to break down into progressing exercises. For example, a choreographic sequence may include a move like a three-step turn leading directly into a leap jump. This step may be challenging for some students to grasp all at once, so you can do one exercise that breaks down just the footwork, one exercise to add in the turn, one exercise to practice the leap jump on its own, and then finally practice piecing them all together. Remember that exercises can be done on the spot in the center of the space, or can be traveling across the room. For these examples, the footwork and turning exercises can be done stationary in the center of the room. And the leap jump exercise can be done traveling across the space, beginning with students lining up on one end and traveling across the room, either in pairs or in small groups. Another example of creating the technical portion of class is to introduce basic vocabulary of a particular style of dance. It could be as simple as line dancing or square dancing. Here are some words from dance educator Jill Hollingsworth, who explains the value and accessibility of these sorts of dances. It's got to be fun. If, it, if, it's, if it's a technique thing, it's got to be fun. It's got to be involved. They should all be doing it together where uh, the technique uh, and, and it involves maybe coupling up and getting back together almost like line dancing or square dancing or folk dancing of some, where the technique is, is there, but it's not as stringent as say a, a ballet class. As important as the exercises are themselves, it is also your job as a teacher to find different ways of explaining them or articulating the instructions in different ways to suit the different backgrounds and learning styles of each of your students. Get creative and use analogies or imagery to get your point across. Here is one example of dance educator and owner of Blue Heel Dance Studio, Carolyn Augustin. How we make it interesting is always analogy. You know, uh, we have this um, for rumba, for uh, samba, for example, you have a very lively spring across the side. So we need them to, to push off their, their standing foot. But if you tell a new person how to push off your standing foot, um, 
what the hell does that mean? So we kind of say, well, just imagine that you were going to step to the side and just as you were supposed to land, you saw a banana peel there. So you quickly, you know, like moved away. So it gives them the analogy of the movement that they have to, um, to, to create in order to do that. So analogy works really, really well with this. For frame, for example, you know, I think a lot of dance uh, genres do this, you know, in terms of standing tall, to be able to imagine that there's a string that's pulling you up and taller and that way you get them to lengthen their spine versus telling somebody can you please lengthen your spine you know can you please uh you know uh, close your rib cage you know but if we tell them that imagine you have two buttons here and you try to button them together so you're getting them to rotate their 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 chest uh, ribs internal inside so those are the kind of things we use you know analogies and 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 the other thing I really love is samba, for example, where you actually have to have a motion, a hip motion, that it feels like you're sitting, but you actually have to crunch your stomach muscles. Again, if you tell a beginner you have to crunch your stomach muscles, you know, and, and, and move your hips in, it's so much easier to tell them. Just imagine if this was your belt, you know, and your belt is now facing forward. You need to tilt your belt so that it's facing the ceiling. So it's that, again, that movement, that analogy of movement that uh, makes it much more interesting. Also recall the importance of giving feedback and it's crucial to help students prevent any injuries if they're executing exercises incorrectly and it encourages them to keep persevering through the challenges. You will refer back to the early episodes on this channel for more in-depth information on these ideas and tailor it to support different learning styles, experiences, and age groups. Your next task is to create three technical exercises. Consider the upcoming choreography section and choose one step from it that uses a coordination of several parts of the body at the same time. Break that step down into three progressional exercises that isolate the different parts of the body involved. Two exercises that can be done in the center of the space on the spot and one exercise that can be done traveling from one end of the space to the other. Choose one song for each of these exercises that matches the expression, speed, and energy for each exercise and add them to your playlist. Pause the video now and complete this task. Now that you have a clear idea of the main portions of your class, we can move one final step backwards and get more into detail about the introductory section, or the warm-up. The warm-up section is incredibly important because it sets the tone for the rest of the class. Make sure you begin by explaining to the students what the goals are for the class, as well as articulating the ground rules for creating a safe and encouraging environment. Refer back to the first episode in the pedagogy series for more in-depth information on that topic, as it is crucial to set the tone before beginning to move your bodies. A warm-up is generally most useful for getting the blood and oxygen flow going, engaging large muscle groups down to more intricate ones, beginning to coordinate movement, mobilizing the joints, and activating the mind-body connection in relation to the space and the others in the class. It's useful to note that an effective warm-up doesn't necessarily have to be incredibly intense, so long as muscle groups are being activated, engaged, and prepared for exertion throughout the rest of class. A possible progression for a warm-up can begin with some cardio-oriented sequences, followed by some mobility exercises and strength-building exercises, and then ending off with some stretching. Cardio can be as simple as jumping jacks, high knee running, or burpees, or even some more complicated and intricate follow-the-leader style dance steps. Mobility exercises can include head movements up and down, side to side and rolling, shoulder rolls, arm circles, rib isolations, ankle and wrist rolls, hip sways, and hip rolls. Strength-focused exercises can include squats, lunges, push-ups, crunches, plank holds, or even strength-building yoga poses if you're familiar with any. Stretching can include a mix of passive stretching and active stretching. Passive stretching is where you hold a position for a long period of time while giving it to gravity in order to release into the stretch. Examples of passive stretching include reaching for your toes, child's pose, seated twist glute stretch, lie down twist spine and shoulder stretch, and sitting on the floor in a straddle position while stretching forward in the center or over each leg. 
Active stretching is where you activate one muscle group in order to stretch another. Examples of active stretching include low lunges with twists, active pigeon stretch, downward dog with leg extensions, side bends and flat backs, and standing quad stretch. Now, let's apply this information and build your warm up. In a minute, you'll pause the video again and create a three minute sequence of nonstop cardio exercises. Then create a sequence of five mobility exercises with an emphasis on opening up range of motion in the neck, shoulders, arms, ribcage, spine, and hips. Then create three strength exercises, specifically ones that target the legs and glutes. From there, build an exercise sequence that focuses on arm strength and core strength building. Finally, create a five minute stretching sequence that targets most of the parts of the body you worked during the earlier stages of the warm up. Make sure to include a mix of passive and active stretching. A solid warm up for a dance class is usually 15 to 20 minutes. While you do this, find music to add to your class playlist. You can work with music you already have or even search through existing dance class playlists and albums on Spotify for inspiration. Make sure the song choices support the energy and mood of the respective sections of your warm up. Pause the video here and complete this task. Congratulations! You have now created a solid, technique-focused dance class. Since we were working backwards, take a look at your class now in its proper chronological order. Double-check your progressions from the warm-up, to the technical exercises, to the choreographic sequence, to the learning outcomes. Ensure that your progressions are logical and make any adjustments if necessary. While we went fairly in-depth to create a technique-focused class, we will briefly outline some ideas to build a creation-focused class as well. You could begin the class with the same warm-up you already developed. Then instead of focusing on teaching technical exercises and vocabulary leading into a choreographed sequence, move into more improvisational and creative tasks that encourage curiosity, exploration, and the creation of movement vocabulary by the students themselves. You can have them work independently or put them in groups and assign each student a role within them. Your job now, as the students create, is to provide feedback, encouragement, support, and suggestions without taking over the process. Show investment in the student's original work as it encourages them to keep exploring, making mistakes, and driving forward. In both types of classes, it is important to motivate students and to push their physical and creative boundaries and guide them to safely encounter and move beyond their limits. This helps to encourage hard work while also establishing trust in you as the teacher. For guidance in building these sections of a creative process focused class, you can refer back to the other series on this channel, specifically the videos focusing on improvisation and dance theater. We'll end off by linking these ideas to more thoughts from Jill Hollingsworth who shares insight from her experiences of teaching dance technique and creation to students of all backgrounds. Know your work, just know your work well enough that you're not so afraid uh, when you go into the class. Um, just dive in with both feet, you know, just do it. Uh, and if you can get out and take some a, a class or two yourself, do it because it, then you, you will understand completely what your students are going through. Um, but just dive in, be involved, be fair, just, just try to be as fair as you can, try and get to ev every student wants you to look at them.